Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 80. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Chapter 9, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Excel Finance class. Hey, uh, we've been talking about discounted cash flow analysis, net present value, whether to uh, valuation techniques for assets. But we want to just in this video look at patterns of cash flows. Here's two projects. They both cost 15000 but notice that the cash flows, 8,000, 6,000, 1,000, uh, one, are exactly the reverse of the other. Now, you're probably never going to get cash flows in projects like this, but recognizing the difference between these will help us uh, understand cash flow patterns and getting used to the data when you're doing this uh, net, these nest present values and estimating future cash flows is very helpful. So first thing we want to notice is that the total for both of these is exactly the same. So if I click here and hit Alt equals, Control Enter, and copy it over. So totals of cash flows are the same. Hey, when would that happen? If we were going to plot net present value on this axis and required rate of return on this axis, where would it be? Because they're the same. Hey, that's when the discount rate is zero. So it'd be right on this axis right here. Now what we want to see here is, or what question I want to ask is, which one of these is always going to be better, bigger? Now we're going to plot it. We're going to actually calculate and prove it to ourselves. But you should be able to just look at these cash flows and go, wait a second. 8,000, 6,000, 5, 1, they're reversed here. That means all this project A, all of the bigger cash flows are earlier in the number of years, right? Year one, we get 8,000 back. Immediately you think, oh, bigger cash flow earlier. There's less time to discount this and take out the earnings or the interest. Whereas this one, this one has to be discounted across four time periods. So that means it's going to take out a lot more interest or earnings, right? The whole idea behind present value going backwards from a future value to time zero, which is finding the present value. You're taking out the earnings you think you're going to earn or the interest. So bigger cash flow later, it's going to discount back and take out way more interest. Cash flow or bigger cash flow earlier, less time to take out interest or earnings. So automatically, this one right here, because they're exactly the same total cash flows, which means net present value at time zero, cash flows earlier, at all points the net present value would be bigger. So you don't even have to plot anything. You just say, I want this project here. Now if you were going to draw this, and I'm going to actually going to draw this. I'm going to go to Insert, Shapes, I'm going to select a line. Uh, I'm going to estimate 5,000, so that's somewhere right about here. I'm just going to go like this. And let's say right, right uh, here somewhere. So that would be my estimate for uh, A. Actually, I'm going to move the line out here like this. Right? And the, uh, it crosses this net present value profile crosses at net present value equals 0, right? That's actually the point at which IRR, whatever that rate is there, there, that's the internal rate of return. Well, let's do the same thing again. I'm going to click right there, boop. Start at the same point, but I'm just going to go to a different point here. So this one right here, if I go to right there, right click, edit text, and I'm going to say uh, this one's A. And we'll prove this to ourselves. We're just estimating this. This is something you should be able to just uh, you know, look at these patterns of cash flow and go immediately. Net present value is higher at all points as compared to B. So I'm going to cop, actually, I'm going to point to Control, click on the edge, and then drag over here. This one will be, and I'm going to edit this, double click if I can get in there. Type B. Oh, that didn't work. I didn't. I'm going to hold, try that again. Control, click, and I'm going to let go of the mouse, but not Control, and that'll copy it. A. Right. So those are the profiles we expect. Because the cash flows are bigger later on, this will be lower at all points. Now let's go ahead and plot this. I'm going to click right here. Equals net present value, the rate. I'm going to click right there. 
comma, the values. This is project A, so I'm going to and then add the negative value right there. So I, that's wrong. That's why I'm checking it down here. You can see the green and the purple moved. So I forgot to lock them. So I'm going to have to put this one in edit mode. Click right there. Hi actually, I could highlight and hit the F4 key. And then click my cursor right there and hit the F4 key. Control Enter. And now if I double click and send it down, it will uh, populate that column with a new formula. I click in the end and see I can see I got it right. All right now watch this. I'm going to. Um, cheat here. This is a trick. I'm going to copy that, escape, put it into edit mode, F2, and then control V. And watch this. I'm just going to move the green box. I'm pointing to the edge. That little cursor right there is the move cursor. So now I got these casos with that rate. Now I can plot this. And if we're going to do, we're going to do an x, y scatter. The x value is here. However many columns you have over here, it will interpret each one as a separate y value, with this being the x. Highlight that. Go up to Insert, Scatter. I'm going to select this one right here. And you could see we estimated with a straight line. But now we can see. Point on the edge, click down here. Right, and I'm going to actually add right um, click there, Control 1, or right click, Format, and say put the legend at the top. I'm going to add a label here, go up to the Chart Tools, Layout, Axis. I'm going to go horizontal, and the horizontal I'm going to immediately type RRR, Enter. That's required rate of return. I'm going to go back up to Axis Title, Vertical. That one, and I'm immediately going to type NPV, Enter. So now we have our chart. And just as we suspected, right? we are trying to recognize cash flow patterns without even having to plot it or calculate net present value. But you can clearly see our guess was A was going to be bigger at all points because bigger cash flows earlier in the project. B was going to be smaller at all points because bigger cash flows later. Our chart, our NPV function and our chart uh, show that our estimate here was correct. Now, this will give you the actual values, right? But this is just the concept, the idea, the recognizing patterns of cash flows, future cash flows when doing discounted uh, cash flow analysis to value an asset. All right, we'll see you next video.